Keep in touch with the Wolf Connection podcast on our Instagram handle at the Wolf Connection pod or email us your questions, comments, and guest ideas to podcast at wolfconnection.org. Thank you for your support and howls to you all. Welcome to the Wolf Connection podcast. I'm your host, John Calvin. Will Stenberg, Zach Stentz, thank you guys so much for coming out to Wolf Connection and, you know, seeing our pack and, and getting this experience. I mean, what what was it like for both of you? Because we just got in from the outside. You guys went to the store a little bit. We spent a couple hours together. Just what are you guys feeling right now? How's everything going for you both? I know it's a little hot outside, but what are you, what are you taking away from this? Seeing, having a uh, wolf come and nuzzle you is a much different experience from uh, watching them from two miles away in the Lamar Valley. Let me tell you that. It's, uh, it's, they're both wonderful experiences, but, uh, but one, you, you know, when you're in Yellowstone, you feel like you're, uh, you're a voyeur and an eavesdrop, eavesdropper and, uh, and coming to the wolf connection, you, f- you know, it's right there in the name. You feel like you're making a connection with a, with a whole other order of intelligent being. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, you know, I, I kept noticing the, the things about them that are that are dog-like and the things that really aren't. And, to, uh, and uh, you know, I think a dog typically is uh, either really skittish and, and scared or really desperately in need of your affection. And what I noticed about these wolves is they're just, like, grounded. And they're like, you know, they say hi to you, and then they go off and do their own thing, and it's, just, it's an encounter that happens on, on their terms, um, so, which is pretty amazing. What are you guys taking away from this because like you said you are invested in this rick mcintyre project you're doing this incredible work with him in yellowstone bringing these stories to life what's something that maybe you're taking away from this experience that you can possibly bring to the project that you guys are helming and and moving forward with I, I mean, one thing that comes to mind immediately is is I'm going and I'm thinking of the drafts that we have, and I think in the current one we we actually describe a wolf as barking um, to get someone's attention. I'm like, that's actually wrong. We need to go and uh, we need to go and fix that. That's a dog behavior. Like wolves, from what we've seen, like very rarely they they have other vocalizations, but they very rarely bark, and that's that's. It's it's very important to convey that while these are canines, they are not domestic dogs. They are a very very different creature altogether. I think it, yeah, um, the the individualism of them that was something that came up a lot in our drafts and working with our partners is like, you know, how can the audience distinguish between individual wolves um, and making finding um, ways to showcase that on the screen. I guess being here, it was um, I was less worried about that because they're all individuals and um, they're all pretty different, either visually or just through their mannerisms and, and and behaviors. It's very clear you're dealing with individual beings. Yeah, is it? Did you guys feel that too? That it's they all have their own personalities, and I know you guys. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Absolutely, oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. They, they're they're you know it. it, it there as many personality types as humans, I think. It's it was amazing going from from enclosure to enclosure and the body language of the different ones were 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 different. The ones that would come check you out and it's like, ah, eh, I've seen enough of you and and walk away. The ones that wouldn't approach you at all, the you know, it's it, there there was there was just so much variation in what we saw even in those two hours. Wow. Yeah. What about you, Will? Yeah, I mean, it was very clear. Um, there are different personalities, and uh, yeah, just uh, you see that with dogs too. But um, you know, dogs are influenced so much by their their owners. Um, and as we were talking about earlier, have a uh, dogs are smart, and we all love our dogs and like to brag about their intelligence. But they have a lot of stuff done for them and a lot of problems solved for them. And um, wolves have this. You look in their eyes, and there's this keen intelligence that's. It, you know, it's, it's, un, I don't want to say unnerving because it's, it's awe inspiring. Yeah. I mean, what update, if any, can you guys give people who are listening about the project moving forward? I know we, we spoke, I don't even know if it was a few months ago, it might have been, but where, where does the project sit in terms of 
drafting stage. I know you said you were drafting maybe some of the scripts. Where is there any movement so far that's maybe different from what we talked about last time? Um, the, I, I I can't remember exactly what we said last time, but we can say that the scripts are all written. The, the scripts are are written. Okay. Um, we've we've been through several drafts, and we're at a place where our partners are really happy with it. And we are in the slowest and most maddening stage of uh, of uh, script development, which is trying to attack, which is the attaching talent stage, as they as they say. And we cannot name names, but um, our partners at Stampede, who um, who used to be big muckety mucks at Warner Brothers a couple of regimes ago, so they still have very good relationships. They are in the process of approaching several um, very exciting filmmakers and a couple of uh, a couple of actors who we think would be very good for the uh, for the uh, uh, Rick McIntyre part. Um, to to try and um, put them together in uh, in a package, and then and then take that package to the um, to the big streamers and studios to uh, to see if uh, which ones bite. Yeah, I, it's so exciting to see this because I, I think we spoke. I don't know if I spoke to you guys about this, but probably with Ashley Avis when she was here. All of these wolf projects coming to the forefront, especially in these big mediums. What does it mean? I might have asked this the last time, but now that you guys have stepped foot in a couple of sanctuaries, you've been to Yellowstone now talking with Rick, what does it feel like to be fully encapsulated into this wolf space? I'll start with you, Will, and then Zach, you can chime in. I mean, I mean, it's an, it's an honor and a privilege. And, um, you know, uh, the wolf space in some ways is a, is a battle. Um, we, we, we wish it weren't, you know, but um, there's, a, there's, t- there's a tide that we're trying to push back against and that has several fronts, and one is is in politics, and um, and another is in art and culture, and that's that's where where we come in is trying to tell stories or to broadcast the stories that Rick has told uh, to reach the widest possible audience, you know, as many people as possible. Um, so yeah, I mean, that we're on the art and and culture front and the storytelling front of that of of in the wolf space, and it, I think it's a it's a crucial role. Yeah, uh, we're we're going up against several centuries of uh, of Western uh, storytelling. Um, you know, we've we've got the uh, the three little pigs and uh, and the big bad wolf, and we've got Little Red Riding Hood, and we've got. Uh, you know, uh, uh, overuse of uh, wolf as a metaphor, as a negative metaphor, and and we feel like all of these, you know, things like what we're working on and American Wolf and uh, and and some of the other projects that are bubbling up out there really have the opportunity to essentially uh, reach the next generation, and that's so critically necessary in changing, especially in Western states, the uh, the the public public perception of wolves. Yeah, I would only add to that that it does seem like uh, um, the, the Cody Roberts incident or however we want to refer to it, um, the, you know, as terrible as it was, and it's beyond words, you know, there was a hope, everybody was hoping against hope that there, it was some kind of inflection point. And of course, these projects were in development before that, but it's interesting to note that, you know, along with all the, the lobbying and the rally that you went to in D.C. and the the, the, the ride to, to Daniel, there's these films being developed too. And it, it does seem like something is in the air for wolves. And we're obviously proud to be part of that, just as you are. Yeah, I, I, I love that you guys talked about the, the next generation. I think that was something that really hit me, is that there are these young voices. Then there's, and Zach, you have three of your own young voices that are so in tune with this as we were walking. I know only two came today, two of your kids, but so in tune, I think, with what was happening here and, and understanding the human animal element, not just the human wolf element. I mean, it's it obviously must hit close to home for both of you just to be, see that and that those sort of feelings and those things are bubbling up, that they are taking note of what's happening in nature and how to help and how to preserve and, and conserve the best they can. Yeah, and and as as a uh, Californian it's it's such an exciting time to be a wolf lover because we, we what what are we up to eight packs in California now that yeah. that 
I, I remember when it was the big news story, what was it only like 10 years ago when OR7 came down from Oregon and, and it was like a wolf in California and now we have full packs reestablishing themselves, including one only only like about 150 miles or a couple hundred miles from here in, uh, in uh, Sequoia, Sequoia National Park and National Forest. So it's it's... I, I'm I'm excited about the next decade for for what that means for for hopefully wolves uh, reestablishing themselves and and humans becoming more innovative about ways that we can coexist with uh, with wolves in the wild. Yeah, I, just as you hear the stories, was there anything that resonated with you, either of you, for today? But to, we're talking about some of the stuff that we do. I know it's a little bit different when you talk about wolf therapy and you talk about you know, having youth being in with, you know, a wolf and stuff like that, as opposed to say like equine therapy, was there anything that struck you guys that maybe you were that, you know, maybe hit, hit a nerve that you were like, wow, I didn't know that this is the way things could happen. I don't know if anything hit you guys when we were going on that tour for two hours. Um, yeah, the therapy component. I mean, if I may, I'll give a little shout out. I, I volunteer at Oregon Donkey Sanctuary. And although it may seem very different, it's too, why very misunderstood animals who suffer because of those of those stereotypes and who have deep, rich emotional lives and 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 keen intelligence. Um, and uh, we're also trying to do do a therapy component. So what you guys are doing with bringing kids out here and finding the commonality between the trauma that animals go through and that we as human animals go through. Yeah. I mean, it's an understudied resource. And I think the possibilities are go really deep. Um, and uh, you, you could see that um, in those wolves. And uh, uh, that was really cool to hear about that aspect of your program. A absolutely. And, and it really kind of, kind of brought home the, you know, the kind of the central spine of the, of the story that we're trying to tell with, uh, with, with Rick's story and, and the reintroduction of the wolves, which is you're telling the story about the wolves in and of themselves, but you're also telling the story about how proximity to wolves and seeing wolves kind of speaks to the human soul and how it changes the people, the, the people who are close to them. And, and the fact that, that you're finding that through the therapy, through the therapy with the, and, and through these kids and adults encounter having these encounters with, uh, with wolves really kind of reinforced that in my mind, that there is something, something about the wolf just really speaks to the, speaks to something deep inside of us. I, and I love that it's you guys are able to to feel it and see it. And I know, I, like I said, a lot of people you know who are listening to this, it's it's hot outside. But to see the regulation, to see how we as both species can sit in the same space, even when it is you know high temperatures, and be in a common area and you know congregate, which I think is really cool. I think a lot of people wouldn't think that is that you have you know a wolf. And, and humans together, and we've been trying to, you know, bust these myths for a while, and, and we've had such success with this. But the fact that you guys are in the wild wolf space and you come here and you're able to get some wolf medicine is always a, a great thing. I mean, what's, I guess, one, one thing from each of you that you are taking from the entirety of your, your visit and what you're going to use moving forward, maybe? You know, I was thinking about um, something that happened in, in Yellowstone when I was here, which is we got to uh, meet a really wonderful gentleman named John Potter, who's an uh, Ojibwe um, oil painter. He's very close friends with Rick and um, and Doug, especially Rick. And uh, he was one of he was he and his brother and a few others were invited to do a like a welcoming ceremony when the wolves first came back. Um, amazing, amazing guy. And he shared with us some like tribal um, knowledge about wolves. And he said that. Um, what really struck me that I walked away with is he said in the Ojibwe language, there's no word for animal. There's just people. These are wolf people, raven people, wow. crow people, fox people, us. And uh, I, that's kind of how I felt when I was in there. Like, this is another nation, you know? And, and although we're, we're, there's a gap between us, we're not the same. We're, we're all, we all have personhood. And you feel that when you look at them. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I think... It, along very along very similar lines it's it's getting to have these encounters 
is a nice demonstration that there are so many different ways that humans can can encounter the natural world and can can encounter the kind of world outside of ourselves and that knocks us out of our own heads. You're not you're not thinking of you know when you're when you're looking in a wolf's amber eyes, you're not thinking about doing your taxes or you're not thinking about, <laughs> you know, um, I hope there's not going to be traffic on the drive drive back. You're just you you are purely in that moment um, having this having this this encounter with it with with another intelligent being, and that's that's something that I'm going to carry with me forever. Wow, I just I can't thank you both enough for you know taking up time you know in your schedule to to be here to make time to to see our sanctuary to see you know the wolves and you know to do this. I mean I know it's. Yeah. It was a pure treat. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, thank it was, you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. It's, it, it's always good. I mean, it's great just to get the the word out about you know what we do, the wolves that are here, and just to bring those experiences to as many people as possible. So again, I, I thank you both for the work you're doing, and yeah, we just look forward to more updates for when you know things. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Well, you I guys know. are now our our, our official um, uh, forum, so we'll, oh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you'll be the first ones. We'll we'll break the news with you. I love it. Per- so you guys have heard it here first. Anybody who's listening, uh, you hear. For- but uh, Zach Stentz, Will Stenberg, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you guys, and and thanks for bringing your family, Zach. This was really great. Oh, thank thank you for hosting them. That was that was the they'll they'll you know this is not something that happens every day. <laughs> totally. Oh my God. Thank you guys so much. How's the all out there and be with you next time. Bye everybody. Looking for more information about Wolf Connection or the podcast, please visit our website at wolfconnection.org where you can donate, sponsor a wolf or become a volunteer. <laughs>